Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Mr. Electron. And in this video, I'm going to teach you how to convert a dead car alternator into a permanent magnet generator. So this is the rotor, and this is the armature winding. Now the plan is to modify the rotor winding with neodymium magnets, and the armature brushes are all worn off. So it was already useless. So that's why I am modifying. So guys, as you can see that uh, the top portion of this armature winding is clean, but the lower portion is still pretty bad. So it can be cleaned only after I remove the base. So let's proceed with that. You can see that the cleaning has got a pretty good effect on the windings. Let's open it from below. So guys here as you can see all the screws nuts and bolts have been removed and now the armature winding is out from the rectifier and the base of the alternator you see yeah so guys as you can see that it is all greased up so the first thing is to clean it up okay okay so guys here as you can see that i cleaned it up as much as i could and now comes the part of the rotor you see it's much cleaner than before yeah so guys here what you see are uh, the five important parts of the alternator all have been opened and separated from each other so this is the top head that holds the shaft of the rotor this is the rotor these are the teeth slip rings bearings okay yeah bearings are working fine now this one is what holds the brushes you can see there are no brushes inside the brushes are completely worn off so i'm going to remove this since i'm going to make it a brushless generator this of course we all know is the armature winding and this is the back cover of this entire setup Okay, so guys, as you can see that I have drilled holes on all the teeth of the rotor. Two holes on each teeth. Yeah, the holes are perfect. Yeah, the bearing is also nice. Now comes the part in which I'm going to mount the magnets according to the poles and then fix them with an adhesive. Okay, so guys, these are the neodymium magnets that I'm going to use to fix on these grooves. So I'm going to use north north on this, south south on this and then again north north on this and accordingly and then fix them with this bond, sticky bond. Okay, so first thing is to find out the poles if it is north or it is south. So guys, uh, the method is simple. All you got to do is understand the magnetic field. Now this is north, then the lower portion of it is going to be south and then this upper portion of this magnet is again going to be north. So the upper one is north. I'm going to place it like this. Yeah, okay. And then again, the same way for this one. So north has been placed on north. Now comes the south. Okay, so first I'm going to place north on north and then south, south. You see the magnets for the north have been already placed. Now comes the south. So starting from this side, south will be the opposite this side. Yeah, this one is quite unfit. I will have to increase the size of the hole here. Yeah, so guys, all the magnets have been placed on the rotor. Now it's time to place glue on them. Okay, so guys, here as you can see that I have evenly placed all the magnets. Now comes the part of placing adhesive so that they can stick in there properly. Okay, so yeah, but before I do that, 
first i'm going to confirm that all the magnets are placed evenly and properly like this is north then this is south and again this is north so let's do that check first so guys checking that is simple all you need is another magnet set and one pole should repel and the other pole should attract okay attracting attracting repelling repelling attracting attracting repelling repelling attracting 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 repelling repelling attracting attracting repelling repelling so all the magnets are placed properly now it's time to place the glue on them okay okay so this process is complete now okay so guys let's place this inside and check if uh, there is no projection and it goes smoothly in yeah as you can see that it is going really smooth it fits so the first part is to place the head on the shaft here as you can see that uh, the shaft and the rotor has got in the head and it's working pretty smooth now comes the base so this is the base and this is the armature winding so I'm going to choose this slot for the wires. Yeah, let's choose this one and see if it fits. Yeah, it fits good enough. You see here, it fits perfectly. And now here goes this. Now I will have to hammer it so that it fixes really nice. So let's do that. Okay, so guys, now it's time to place back the final long screws. Okay, let's see if it is rotating freely or not yeah it's running okay okay so guys the placing and installation of the rotor the armature winding and the casing has completed and as you can see that it is running really smooth you see very smooth and the smoothness can be judged if I rotate it and then it continues to rotate you see smooth so guys now I'm going to measure the output voltage generated voltage and current of this alternator with the help of this multimeter so uh, yeah this is uh, the multimeter that I got from Banggood's link to buy this will be provided in the description auto power on okay so at present it is at the voltage mode so let me show you one thing first here as you can see there are three terminals one two and this one smaller one is three so these three terminals are the three phases of this alternator but uh, since these multimeters have only two terminals and can measure only single phase ec so i will use only two of the three terminals provided here to just measure the phase voltage because the voltage of the single phase is equivalent to the voltage of the three phase so guys taking any of the two wires Two wires have been connected, the middle one is left out. Let's rotate the shaft and see how much voltage I can get to be displayed over here. Okay, so I'm going to start with the rope rotation testing. So rope has been wound on the shaft. Now it's time to pull it. You can see voltage being displayed because of the minor movement. Okay. Once again, so the maximum voltage I could achieve with hand rotation was around 1.6 volts. Now let's go a little further. So guys, it seems like the measurement delay, voltage display measurement delay is a little bit longer for this multimeter. So I'm going to use uh, the traditional cheap multimeter yellow multimeter for testing the generators yeah pointing it towards 200 volts AC mode so guys thread has been wound meter has been connected pointing towards AC mode 200 volts keep watching the display screen as I pull the thread
Yeah, you saw it generated around 5.5 volts AC. Let's go a little hard on it and see how much more I can generate. Okay, the thread has been wound. Go! Six point three hand rotation voltage. Nice. Okay, so guys, uh, this is a car indicator bulb that I'm going to connect and test with this alternator being used as a generator. So guys, as you can see that the bulb has been connected. It's time to wound the thread. Okay. You can see that it is glowing. Now let's turn off the lights and see how much it is illuminating. Nice. Hi guys, in my previous video you saw me make a powerful high current 3 phase rectifier from two single phase rectifiers 35 amperes each. So today in this video I'm going to test this rectifier on a car alternator, okay, which you have already seen in one of my previous videos. Now guys, if you look closely on its back you will see that the 3 phase rectifier is missing and the voltage regulator is also missing and the brush terminals are out blue and red over here and since there is no rectifier only three wires output wires are present this one this one this one which are the three phase so to get a dc output we will need to add a rectifier let's move on to the connection of the rectifier so take the rectifier and place it on any of the screws available you see here there are three screws this one this one this one so i'm going to choose this one because the placing is just easier and no other reason and you can see that I've also placed this sheet with uh, this hole or bore in it which is going to help me place it rigidly so you see that it goes like this and I have this nut now tighten up this one also and now we have a pretty good physically stable three phase rectifier on the body of the alternator just as another part that is attached to an alternator so guys let's first remove the final output wires which are these two the red and the black okay they are getting in the way of me connecting the rectifier electrically to the alternator and here they are removed i'm going to connect it afterwards so so let's electrically connect all the three together not together to the to their respective pins with the help of the clips so the first is the blue one attached to the first wire of three phase second the black one okay you see that's the black one another ac done now all that is left is the last one taking it from below and we have the third one also connected so guys all the three wires from the rectifier the three phase wires from this custom made rectifier have been connected to the output wires from the armature winding of the car alternator which were these three one two and three okay now comes the part of getting the output from the rectifier this one is black okay so negative connected positive in process and done so guys positive negative both have been connected and finally we have the two wires on which the entire generated output voltage and current will be available in the form of dc or direct current okay let's place the alternator like this and we have a robust setup over here easy to operate and yeah this piece of the rectifier it has a great quality that uh, it can handle a surge current of up to 400 amperes and a continuous current of up to 50 amperes because of the two rectifiers and one rectifier has a capability of only up to 35 amps so let's test it without any further delay now guys you might have already seen this laptop charger of my 
fine now if you look closely you will see that it's rated at 12 volts and 5 amperes which is what i'm going to feed this alternator with on its rotor winding although the current is not going to be exactly 5 amperes because the rotor winding does not need so much current for excitation it excites even at 1 amps or 1.5 amps here are the two wires positive for red and black for negative which will be connected on these two wires black being the negative will be connected to the blue first let's connect the red wire okay red wire has been connected you see now comes the black but i will connect it afterwards first i will have to connect a load on these two terminals or a meter and then do some hand rotation and rope rotation here as you can see that i have this car headlamp bulb 55 watts so let's connect it to the two final output wires of the rectifier okay as you can see that it has been connected now guys let's wound the thread on the pulley of the alternator and then see how bright it glows okay this much should be fine one more turn okay now keep watching the bulb over here oh you see now let's turn off the lights and see how good it is this time sky is finding thread once again although the pulley gets really tight when i pull it if the pulley had been bigger uh, then the pulling part would be a little bit easier and the bulb would have blown even better but let's do it now ah yeah it is good this way also now guys here as you can see that i have the multimeter so uh, let's point it towards dc voltage measurement mode okay and this is the heat sink that i'm using it that i'm using as support okay multimeter has been connected well guys uh, it seems that the multimeter should be closer and the alternator should be on the other side because it's not clear yeah and now it is visible okay so let's wound the thread and see how much voltage it indicates now guys i am measuring the maximum voltage possible that this alternator is going to generate okay and why am i doing that because i have removed the voltage regulator or you can say that i've bypassed the voltage regulator so the alternator is free to generate as much voltage as possible depending upon the rpm i give here okay the voltage regulator limits the output voltage to 12.5 or maybe 13 volts but there is no limit now i have added separate rectifiers okay so let's mount the thread and see what happens okay so guys keep watching the display screen here okay go as you saw it was around 17.5 volts dc now guys this is a very good multimeter with 600 amps current display and all but there is one problem is the super fast display okay you see that i have to rotate and then it takes little time to display the exact voltage which is not the case with this cheap one although it does not have so many functions and uh, easiness but still it's uh, spontaneous time instantaneous time is really good so let's disconnect this multimeter and switch it with the other one and then do the same test okay so multimeter has been connected once again winding thread let's move it aside keep watching the display screen okay go you saw that it was somewhere around 19.5 volts now guys you have already seen the voltage now let's pointed towards the current measurement mode 10 amperes okay and move the wire pointer like this okay keep watching the display screen guys okay 7.5 amperes that was pretty good although uh, the pulley is very small it was really hard for me to pull the thread and 12 7 is 84 so the maximum power that i am producing over here is 84 watts if we consider only 12 volts then it is 84 watts but if we consider 20 volts because of no voltage regulator then this power is going to increase from 84 to 20 into 7.5 so uh, 7 to the 14 140 and uh, like 0.5 extra 
So you see that how removing the voltage regulator actually increases the overall output power of a car alternator. You can use a stable buck converter to reduce the voltage output voltage from 20 to 12 volts just as in solar panels and you can get more power output from the same alternator. Let's give it one more try. Go! You saw 9.54 amperes, almost 10 amperes. That is the maximum capability of this multimeter to read. Otherwise, it is going to get damaged. I mean, the shunt resistance inside it. Now, guys, I have this really big 250 watts bulb, okay? You see 24 volts and 250 watts starlight. So, let's connect this and see how bright it glows or even if it is possible for this alternator to glow this just by hand rotation. Okay, so the bulb has been safely connected. Complete the thread winding part. Done. Okay, connection made. Okay, keep watching the bulb over here. Okay. Whoa, it was really difficult. The tungsten filament is really thick. Yeah, and it is hot. Now guys, let's try it once again in full close-up. You see? Okay. Yeah, that's the max I can do. Now guys, here as you can see that I have connected uh, a very powerful large DC motor, permanent magnet DC motor to the car alternator with the help of this belt. Okay. And... Uh, the rating of this DC motor is 1.5 HP, RPM 4000 volts, 180, 7.5 amperes and field permanent magnet. And you see that here I have this rectifier installed and no voltage regulator. And I want to see what is the maximum voltage I can achieve if I bypass the voltage regulator, meaning no voltage regulator at all. Okay, so let's connect the DC motor supply to this motor controller. Okay, so let's turn on the supply now. Okay, go. And now let's connect the final excitation terminal from the laptop charger. So guys, the output voltage as you can see is around 8 volts, only 8 volts DC. Let's increase it by increasing the RPM of the DC motor of course. You see, I have increased the speed of the DC motor, voltage has increased to 9.46. Let's go more. We have reached around 12 volts. And crossing almost 15 volts and close to 17 volts. Let's go even higher. 17.18 volts. You see that the voltage regulator fixes the output voltage of the alternator to around 13 volts and we have gained around 18 volts more 90 20 volts guys 20 volts let's go more 20 to 23 volts <laughs> a 12 volts alternator is producing 24 volts almost and we are doing almost full here and the belt can break at any time okay let's reach 24 volts and see what happens <laughs> here we are we are reaching 26 volts so let's turn it off <laughs> that was seriously a great experiment guys so you see that if we bypass the voltage regulator if we remove the voltage regulator from a car alternator we can go to much higher volts than to what it is designed for so guys i hope you liked or enjoyed this video please hit like and don't forget to share and subscribe see you in the next one with more wonderful videos related to alternators and dc motors okay hit that subscribe button and bell icon bye
Hi guys, you are watching channel Mr. Electron and this what you see is my mod for my tachometer. Now, the tachometers that are available in the market usually come with two AAA batteries which drain really fast because of the laser pointer installed in the tachometer. So to prevent that or to tackle that situation, I constructed this device or modified it into a rechargeable one by using two 2000 mAh lithium ion batteries. And now it works really well as you can see and the batteries drain in around five or six months or so and when they do i can easily recharge it and guys this what you see is a motor alternator set and this motor is going to be driven by that speed controller box this is the back side of the car alternator and the small and thin red and blue wires that you see those are for exciting the rotor winding of the car alternator by connecting a 12 volts battery and to the left of it is a custom made three phase rectifier since the original rectifier broke link for its construction video will be provided in the description you can check it out that's the battery i'm going to use for the excitation of rotor winding of the car alternator and guys there's one thing i forgot to tell you full output of the car alternator will appear on these two terminals red and black so guys now it's time to connect this 12 volts ups battery and these two jumper cables to the rotor winding terminals of this alternator okay red will be connected to red and blue is going to be the negative although polarity does not matter here and you see the connection has been successfully made so guys before starting the machine let's point the meter towards voltage measurement mode and connect the pins and the pin outs to the output terminals of the alternator so meter terminals have been successfully connected so guys you can see that the tachometer is fully set and the meter at present is pointing zero volts so let's connect the battery terminals to the rotor winding and start the test okay so first let's turn on the motor and the laser pointer so guys here as you can see that i'm getting here around 1300 rpm and the voltage is around 1.5 volts and uh, uh, it is happening something with my hand so anyways that is just uh, the ripple effect okay so anyways i have not connected this terminal from the rotor winding to the battery to activate the rotor so let's do that and check the change in rpm and also see if it reaches 12 volts or more or less you can see that the rpm has reduced to 1000 and the voltage is around 11.45 so we will have to increase the rpm a little bit so i'm going to do it from here that's the knob let's keep this connected and here we are getting around 11.7 volts at 1200 rpm although fluctuating a lot increasing it a little bit and the voltage is also increasing yeah so 1300 rpm yeah 1300 rpm is at what the alternator is producing exact 12 volts dc okay so that's all for today's video guys let's turn off the setup first removing this terminal and you can see as soon as I remove the terminal, the speed increased because when the electromagnet gets excited, the RPM reduces because this motor gets loaded. So it takes little more power from the source to compensate for the lost RPM.